The fact that people are still trying to use all lives matter to justify their arguments, it hurts me because I'm like, all lives can't matter unless black lives matter too. I'm not saying that only black lives matter, but mm -hmm. if you expect to be as black women and not ride for my people and mm -hmm. fight for my people and do everything I possibly can, you got it mad twisted. Hi, welcome. Recently, I had a conversation with Heidi, Emanuela, Adrian, Marlon, and Helena about issues that we have been facing for centuries. Here are some highlights. So with everything going on, <laughs> how are we feeling? How much time money. you got? He's just gonna go off. <laughs> One well, morning I'll... I wake up and I'm just so angry. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> I look at my, um, my Twitter, mm -hmm. my Instagram, mm -hmm. and the first thing I see on my Twitter is like, what's going on in America? And I'm mm -hmm. just, I don't know. I just wake up so pissed off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, why? Yeah, exactly. Why is it so difficult for us to just fight for our, our equal rights, just be treated yeah, fairly? Just, like, why is it? Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. Rough. <laughs> <laughs> she pulls up the whole like speech. Literally. I know. No, same thing. Like, I'll like wake up and like I'll mm -hmm. literally just scroll through Twitter for five minutes, and mm -hmm. then I just like get so overwhelmed and so angry. And like, I just like, I have to stop being angry, but mm -hmm. I can't, like, I'm just tired of it. So like, I just have to like log off and I'm like, I hate it. And then now seeing these protests, it's like, wow, like this could actually be a revolution. That's what a lot of people are saying. But it's also just giving you some apocalyptic tribulation. I just, I just <laughs> Damn. Listen. I'm, a, I'm not even gonna lie to you, like, uh -huh. I didn't know I would be, I knew it was gonna happen, yeah. I just didn't know I would be young and alive to see it myself. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know. Especially, like, how crazy everything's going on, like, especially in America, like, with yeah. all like, the riots and stuff, like, mm -hmm. I'm proud they're, like, not just peacefully protesting because that wasn't really doing anything for us. Yeah. But, like, on the other hand, there's so many Black people that are, like, it's not caught on camera like during the protest or the riots like there's so much police brutality exactly and, like, yeah. yeah i saw on twitter like you know a whole collage of cops just hugging other protesters kneeling with them and some people were commenting like yo this is bull this is propaganda <laughs> yeah, like I 10 minutes later like, propaganda yeah like <laughs> tear gas after that or beat this all like when this all happened i was still on my fast and the whole part of my fast was me being off of social media so i could just mm -hmm. focus on my time with god thing. yeah it got to a point where i was like you know i have to break my fast like i have to and the amount of pain I felt on the inside was indescribable. Like my heart, mm -hmm. my spirit was heavy. Just thinking about me. Like when I looked at George Floyd and I, like, I watched the video mm -hmm. of him dying. And, you know, when I saw him, I saw my dad. I saw my uncles. Mm -hmm. You know, when I see, look at Brianna, I see me, I see my mom, I see my aunts, I see cousins. Like, it was just so heart-wrenching. And then the fact that you know, we have to sit down six-year-olds and five-year-olds and have the conversation about race mm -hmm. in the future when I have my Black sons and daughters knowing that I have to sit them down and still most likely have this conversation. Because no matter how much change we get from this protest, there's still going to be those people, you know? And the fact that just seeing that people of different races, different religions, different yeah. beliefs and values, all yeah. coming together some of which are very opposing beliefs are still coming together and they're mm -hmm. like no enough is enough much as i want to say i've lost faith in humanity i haven't because i'm like if people from opposing beliefs can come together to fight for one cause that shows me that you know there are still good people in the world even in the midst of the evil bad that we see day by day yeah and then i'm thinking about the deaths that we don't see the deaths that aren't recorded you know um, like just there's so many like there's so much going on like i feel like this one was just the tipping point because people were like no enough is enough get all of these people every single one and then canadians just they make me laugh like they have the gall to say like oh thank god i'm canadian listen we are just as bad as america the only oh, reason man. we don't see it is hide it look at how they treat the 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like day by day, the Indian act. Because, mm-hmm. Like there's so much mm-hmm. you can dig up if you're ready. And the fact that you're only started apologizing now or because you got caught, like that's not enough for me. You're mm-hmm. not doing anything. Schools, Black Student Alliance is not enough. Mm-hmm. Show me that you care for me. Mm-hmm. Show me that you care. But no, like you're doing like these copy and paste statements on your Twitter and sending out emails. You're not doing anything. Yeah. What What are you donating? Are you being socially conscious and aware of what your Black students will have to face? Mm-hmm. Are you sharing petitions? Are you doing, like the only reason I'm staying informed right now is because of Twitter and Instagram. Mm-hmm. My school is not back for me. It's just like, it's like, it's frustrating. Yeah. Go girl, let it all out. That's <laughs> true. Literally. Yeah, still, I know that York sent out an email saying they stand with the Black community. I know, Alina. I know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these universities, a lot of these companies, they're like saying, you know, we stand with the Black community when there's been like allegations against these people. Honestly, about, like, I don't even mean that. Mm-hmm. Like, they sent it to me and I'm like, yeah, you can keep that to yourself. I don't want to see that. Exactly. Like, yeah. don't worry. You have you don't have to fool us. We know. <laughs> we, yeah. we know how like, you really are. Even yesterday, like when it was Blackout Tuesday, I'm like, when you're posting a black screen, it's uh-huh. just not like a black screen and then yeah. stop. No. Yeah. Yeah. Educated. Like, there's so much on Twitter. There's so exactly. much on Instagram. Check the hashtags. Check mm-hmm. them. Like, mm-hmm. if you can't monetarily donate, there are people setting up YouTube videos and spamming them with ads. You don't yeah, even yeah. watch the video. Just play it in the background. Mm-hmm. I know. You know? But, like, it's this... And it's funny, because it's always protests and stuff like this that shows you, like, people's true character, who they mm-hmm. really are. Like, and I'm like, y'all are the same people who fetish Black men, fetish Black women, fetish our Black features. Y'all want the black features, but not on black. I was thinking that just the other day. The same in people my head. reading half breed children and mm-hmm. not acknowledging the fact that they're half black. Yeah. They're your sons, your daughters, uh-huh. you should be the first people to speak up about it. Yes, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going off on the Kardashian suit. <laughs> oh, who is that? <laughs> Why were they Man. the last people to speak? All of their children. Oh, they did? <laughs> Every single one of them. Make it make sense. Mm-hmm. I need to know, like, why? You were taking a sabbatical? Did you, because I know you're aware. I know you're watching the, some news and like, and this is what, this is where privilege comes in and people are not understanding it. Yeah. Like, I don't think they realize that life privilege and white privilege are two different things. I can say for myself as a black woman, I am privileged because I have a roof over my head. Mm-hmm. Those are shoes on my feet. There's not mm-hmm. one in my life I've ever gone to bed hungry. That is privilege. A lot of my brothers and sisters can't say that, so I'm thankful. White privilege is me. I can go outside and not have to worry. I can go run and not worry. But no, every day I'm out there, on, I'm afraid for my life. Mm-hmm. That's, that could possibly be my last day. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get lynched. I don't know if I'm going to get racially profiled. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What about black on what, what about black on white crime? What about white on white crime? I don't think you guys realize this is not the root. These are symptoms of the root problem. Mm-hmm. All of it. The war on drugs. Everything. There are symptoms of the root. And it's white supremacy and it's racism in general. And the fact that you, the fact that people are still trying to use all lives matter to justify their arguments, it hurts me because I'm like. All lives can't matter unless black lives matter too. I'm not saying that only black lives matter, but Mm. if you expect to be a black woman and not ride for my people and Mm -hmm. fight for my people and do everything I possibly can, you got it mad twisted. And all of those coons who are hanging out with white people who have right friends and are not not checking them or trying to not be black they're just being black and not black enough because they don't want to be associated with us guess what honey you're not around your white friends they still see this you're still black to them they don't care so i don't care who you're hanging out with at the end of the day it comes down to what you look like i don't Mm -hmm. see color we're all supposed to see color it's literally the first thing you see we're supposed to be celebrating each other's differences so don't get i don't see color yeah you see color so don't miss me with all that. Like, uh, <laughs> Hi, B. Oh, my whoa, gosh. Whoa. She oh, just whoa. preached. She just I'm preached. Speechless. <laughs> I know, right? Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I feel that. I do. Specifically, like, you're American. So how are you feeling about everything that's going on over there? I mean, I feel like 
people that are not there are just looking at it as like like this doesn't affect me and all of that mm. but I feel like as long as you're a human it affects you as long as you're a black person it affects you like this is another opportunity for us to like bring awareness or like join a movement type of thing and it shouldn't even be like another opportunity because that just shows that like it happens way too often like there's way too many protests like that yeah i mean especially because i have my family there too mm. like it's my responsibility it's my responsibility as a black man mm. it's my responsibility as a human being to like do what i can and like you know get people to sign the um petitions stuff. yeah all those things yeah Topping off when you talked about Black Canadians and how when we see those stuff happening in America and some Black Canadians are like, oh, okay, I don't have to worry that much. But it's like, okay. Learning so much that I actually didn't know. Um, yeah, it was just crazy for me. And mm-hmm. I saw like another post saying, um, um, Doug Ford, he was basically saying, um, Canada doesn't have the... the um, yeah, you saw it too, Heidi. <laughs> he was basically saying how Canada doesn't have um uh systemic racism like america does hi so days later he backtracked that statement thankfully because as you can see from our reactions we were really confused and in my head i'm thinking okay so let me read the comments now (laughs) and i'm seeing all these people talking about yeah um i'm afraid to say that it's true that um we don't have systemic racism as America does. And in my head, I'm thinking, where do these people, like, what are you guys talking about? Do they even live here? (laughs) (laughs) Like, Like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah, we do. It may not be up in your face. Like, America, Mm -hmm. it exists. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Some people are just crazy, to be honest. Yeah, I thought it was Twitter. I think it was, like, yesterday or earlier today. And this black kid was literally getting searched and arrested. Like, he was probably, like, 14, 15. Mm-hmm. And it was in the Durham region. So that's, like, what, Richmond Hill area or something? Wow. And I was literally, like, I was watching this video and I was like, what? And then, like, mm-hmm. all his friends were, like, trying to, like, be, like... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, all of his friends were trying to be, like, yo, like, what are you doing? Like, he didn't do anything. Like, you can't search him like that, whatever. And this mm-hmm. one kid just swore at them. Like, he was like, oh, like, what the F is going on? They literally grabbed him handcuffed him, searched his bag, searched his pockets, and then put, put them both in the car and then just left. And I was like, bro, did you not just see what happened mm-hmm. with George Floyd? And you're putting your neck on this innocent black kid for what? Like, wow. it makes no sense. I saw this video that said um, hairdressers and like barber shops, like the people who work there get more training hours than cops do. And I was like, you're telling me it takes more training to have to learn how to cut hair and style hair than it does to protect people and know when to shoot a gun. Like, are you kidding me? But yeah. one thing I can't help but wonder is the whole Breonna Taylor situation. Sandra Black. Mm. We needed to talk about the Black women that are being killed by police and yeah. how we tend to find out two months afterwards and then kind of fight for it. Or it's just how when a Black man sadly is murdered by police, more attention comes to there than to a black woman since we're all black women and everything like where are our opinions how we feel i think it is important to talk about black women and also them being um killed by police Mm -hmm. especially even um that toronto case that's been that people have been protesting about Mm -hmm. like throwing off the balcony like that and it happened within may right like that wasn't something that happened before yeah brought now so that was kind of surprising kind of fell in at the same time as george floyd so i just felt very like overwhelmed Mm -hmm. if if, like something happened in the u.s and then something else just happened here too um and i think that even people were protesting for her that it ended up being more about george than even about her like people didn't really chant her name even though it came for her but it's like mm-hmm. if you came for her then why aren't you putting her on your posters like why is it it's still like George Floyd is just as important but if you are doing a protest about this woman who died under police care mm-hmm. then make the protest 
about that, but you can still address the other issues that are going on within the black community courts. Yeah, and then they ended up arresting the boyfriend for shooting the police, but didn't do anything to the cops, even though they didn't even have a warrant, were in the wrong neighborhood, and shot someone who was literally in bed doing nothing. And the person who they were looking for was already in custody, right? I think so. Yeah. It's like you're not even safe at home, you know? Yeah. You're not. You're not safe anywhere. I feel like because we're so used to seeing it happening to Black men, not mm-hmm. saying that it doesn't happen to Black women, but I feel like we're so because we're so used to seeing it um, more targeted towards Black men, we ride harder for Black men versus when it's black women, yes, we still ride hard for them, but it's not the same. Like, even like you said, it's like said it just now, like the response is delayed. Like we mm-hmm. find it later as opposed to when it happens. Mm-hmm. When it's a black man, we find out in the instant, right away. the riot, people are ready to protest, you know? So I think it just depends on like, who's willing to really put the information out there sooner Who's going to give us this information? Can we really trust people who are reliable enough to give us this information? Yeah. I think it all comes down to the media censoring things because they're trying to save face. Like, listen, we need to know what's going on. We, like, I think you guys need to start focusing on what's going on in the people. Because these riots and these protests, they're not happening just because. We're fighting for the common good of the people, which governments are failing to do. Mm-hmm. That's trying to get you to realize the system isn't working for us you guys built the system for you you weren't thinking about us when you built the system you know so we're if we have to dismantle the system and build a new one we're gonna do so and you there's literally nothing you can do about it because it's really time for a change like we can't like so when a black man gets shot and killed we we protest for him same thing for a woman like, we need that equality on both fronts. And I think it comes down to a bit of sexism, too. Yeah, because I know, um, like, there's a video of Malcolm X speaking, like, way back when. And he was saying, like, Black women are the most disrespected group of people, yeah. like, on Earth. And it's yeah. like, it was present then, it's present now. Like, mm-hmm. we can still see. Whenever there's a Black woman who dies, there's never any video evidence. And I'm not saying that we should have video evidence in order for these murderers to, or the victims to get justice and for their families, because I honestly don't like seeing the videos, but the fact that black women, like whenever like they're murdered by cops or police brutality happens with them, everyone's kind of like, oh yeah, that's sad. But this black man, like y'all need to see what this happened. Yeah. And it's just like, where's the same energy? Like we have so many problems within the own community. We have colorism going on. We have, blatant ignorance and hate towards our own people which is like i don't understand like why is it light skin this and dark skin that yeah. why is it that when it becomes interracial like if i decide to date someone interracially it's a problem but yeah. when you do it as a man you're praised for it yeah. and then every time i support you in something and then i get backlash and i expect some support you're not there for me Terry Crews, Gabrielle Union. I feel like it's just because no one's, no one's taking the time to care. Like no one's, it's like, I feel like as a black woman, we ride hard for so many people and then they just don't reciprocate the energy. Mm -hmm. And then we're left to pick up the pieces and fight for ourselves. And then we get this strong, angry black woman narrative. And I'm like, not all of us are like that. I shouldn't have to be a strong black woman. Can I just be a black woman? Mm That's when the crazy comes in. Exactly. I shouldn't have to have strong and angry attached to my name just Mm -hmm. for attention to me. And if I'm passionate about something, I'm being angry or I'm being a threat. Like, I need to make it make sense. Make it make sense. Can I just be passionate about something and speak passionately without me being angry about it? And if I am getting angry, it's because you're not listening to me. It shouldn't get to the point where I have to get angry. But then I realize you're not listening to what I'm having to say or you're twisting my words. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to get angry and we get even more passionate and maybe even more aggressive in my tone. And then, oh, that's she's a threat. She's dangerous. Like, we can't have that. I'm sorry. I'm passionate about what I'm speaking about because you clearly common sense really is a luxury because you're really not getting what I'm trying to say. 
it's the question about racism, whether it is nurtured or by nature. I just want to hear our take on it. I believe that it's nurtured. I don't think a kid is was just born as racist. It has to do with the parents, with the figure that they look up to. So who wants to take it away? I'll go first, if you guys don't mind. Go ahead. Talk to your toxic. <laughs> um, yeah, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. Um, I've seen, I don't know if you guys seen this video where the two kids went, like, they were walking across the street, opposite sides, and they mm-hmm. see each other. And they go for a great big hug. Yeah. And they're kind of it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's just basically a good example of how to put it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of kids, well, like everyone, I would say, well, not everyone, but like most people yeah. go up learning to, you know, love the person for who they are, not for the color of their skin. But you got some people out there that just, feel like because their skin color is white, they feel that they are superior and inferior to anyone else, which Mm -hmm. to me makes no sense because at the end of your life and my life, we're both getting buried six feet under and we're still bleeding the same color blood. So to me, it just makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I agree. Even if you're black and your parents don't like it, it just depends on how you're raised. Like, if you were, for example, you had, like, a black dad, white mom type of thing, and then your black dad abandoned you the whole of your life, like, you're probably going to grow up hating black people. Mm-hmm. And then I think, like, some of it is, like, taught, obviously. Like, people, like, teach their kids to, like, mm-hmm. be, like, whatever. Yeah, I definitely think it's nurtured because there's, like, absolutely no logical sense where you would say racism is in your DNA. Like, absolutely none. Kids mm-hmm. are just, like you said, like, they're just, like, they just love who you are as a person. Like, they don't care about color of skin. They don't mm-hmm. care about gender. Yeah. Until, like, people start, like, manipulating their mind and saying, oh, girls have cooties, stay away. Or, like, oh, yeah. you have a girlfriend. Or, oh, mm-hmm. you see that person just because they're Black or just because they're Hispanic or whatever, just because they look different than us mm-hmm. or, like, on a higher pedestal than them. It makes no sense. And I have a story. It's not my story. It's my mom's story. Uh Um, So she's a kindergarten teacher. And one of her students came up to her and said that today after school, I have to go walk with my cousin home. And she was like, oh, okay. And then she was like, yeah, my mommy said that um, black men are out there and they're going to get us. So I have to walk with my cousin. And my mom's like, did you know I'm black? And she's and that little girl was so shook because she doesn't even know who black people are because why would she say that in front of my mom yeah. you know but she just knows what her mom told her mm-hmm. so then my mom told me and i was just like like these kids will say anything that their parents tell them and she hears these type of stuff all the time right and they don't even know they just know whatever they say must be the truth right and they're not even um like, the parents don't even show them, like, how a black person looks like or how a brown person looks like or mm-hmm. any other race. They just know what they know and go with it. I don't know. It was so sad. I would mm-hmm. love to ask these people, like, people who think this way, what makes us any different from them? I mean, besides the color of my skin, but I would love to know, what would make me any different from you? <laughs> we work, you know out in an environment where we see people, mind you, Canada is a very multicultural, very diverse, diverse mm-hmm. country. It's not just white people. So I just don't get it. Like, I would really like to get to know one of these people, like their mindset. And I, I just want to know, really, because it just doesn't make any sense to me. I just think a lot of these races still have in their minds like from their ancestors and our ancestors because we were slaves and because we were brought from a different country they're still like okay like you're lesser than me because you were lesser than me Mm -hmm. and because you were that means that you still are racism is definitely taught even within our community like things that i've heard even relatives say about other races and Mm -hmm. other communities like and then you grow up and you're like the hell are y'all thinking what are y'all trying to teach these kids 
Like, what is going on? Yeah, yeah. I feel like our generation, like, we're going to be some really good parents because, like, our kids, like, they're going to see color, they're going to acknowledge it, but they're going to look past that. I feel like it's our job, especially as people who not only experience being taught racism, but in the sense of experienced racism, to educate even the little ones that are coming up now, let them understand that this is the reality. This is what we're trying to fight for. This is what we're trying to work against kind of thing, you know, because we cannot, we cannot let this cycle repeat for the life of me. It'll really like burn me if I'm 60 or 65 and I still have to be si- like going out on marches, like mm-hmm. five, I done live my life. Like what's going on? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. Mm. yeah I feel like when Emanuela talked about the girl that said the racist remark um it made me think about something that happened to me when I was a kid when I had this best friend and she was inviting everyone to her birthday party and I kind of was like oh hey where's mine and she was like oh my dad said I can't invite you because you're black I was like maybe nine, eight. I think it was like that age when I started to kind of realize maybe there was a little difference. Yeah, it makes you wonder. When did you guys experience or finally felt like maybe I'm being treated a little bit differently or people see me a bit differently? So what was at your age when you started to see the racism? Honestly? Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable with it. (laughs) Honestly, I'm going to be so honest. I don't... Well, I probably experienced it, but never realized it. Mm, mm-hmm. Growing up, I've always grown in like, I wouldn't say predominantly black community, but it was yeah. very multicultural. And a lot of the kids I was around were dark colored skin per se. So mm-hmm. for me, like maybe I have, but never realized it. Cause knowing me, I don't really pay attention to a lot of things. I never experienced racism. Like I can have an any day. <laughs> I think my first moment was in the first grade, actually. Mm. Um, or in, actually, yeah, it was first grade. Mm-hmm. And um, I had this best friend, and she was white. And there was this girl, and she was brown. And she basically told me I couldn't be friends with the little white girl at the time. And she was basically, every time I was around her, she'd pull her away every single time. And then she didn't really have to say it, but like, it wasn't until I got older, I kind of realized what was happening. Mm -hmm. And even in like middle school and high school, like having white teachers tell me, like if I say, oh, I want to be this and I want to be that, telling them, them telling me, oh, I can't be those two things at once. Or you can only pick one. There's only one, like, route for you. Mm -hmm. In high school, like, with some of the teachers that we had that were openly racist towards some of the Black kids, and it might not have been large and a big display, but it was there. Mm -hmm. Am I the only one who did not realize that? Oh, yeah, for sure. We did. We did. Wow. Like, it, it really kind of, like, shaped, like how I felt about myself. And now I'm in this predominantly white school in the up in the mountains. And I get terrified because every time I see another black person, I feel some sort of comfort. Like being with my black student alliance, I feel comfort. But knowing that I'm predominantly white, not like I'm in a predominantly white place. And the first thing people are seeing is my skin color. And then they probably already have all these stereotypes of me because of what music says about Black women, Mm -hmm. portrays about Black women. Like, I spent a lot of time watching documentaries about how they view us on the other side of the world, like in countries like Korea and Japan and China, how they see Black people. And the way they see us is mind boggling. Like, first and foremost, they believe all of us are African. (laughs) Like, and like they have like all everything they know about us comes from quote unquote black culture. So our music, our shows, our movies, they see us as gangsters, as thugs, as thieves, as criminals. Like they that's 
that's all they see us as. They don't see us as the other stuff that we know because we're on this side of the world. So we've seen it all. So I've just been exposed to so much that I don't know, like the way, like I try, like this is why I'm kind of glad for quarantine in a sense, because now I'm kind of like changing and shifting my views. Like, yes, I might have experienced these racist things or these microaggressions, but I don't have to dwell on them and I can still find ways to combat them without getting overly angry or over the top kind of thing. With all of this, um this protesting, this fight going on, we're starting to get people understanding that they have to help. But this is the non-Black community. So how do we kind of feel about them helping? I mean, of course, like Rihanna said, we need allies. Oh, but, huh? oh yeah, yeah, Rihanna yeah. did a nice speech. She was like, guys, we need to, you know, mm. to build the society. Tell them to pull up. No, we gotta, yeah, you know, we gotta work together. Yeah. I mean, some might be fake about it, but still, some opinions. I'm glad that they're finally stepping up mm-hmm. and doing their part in this, yeah. but I don't think that they should be praised for doing this because it's not like, oh, like, you support me, thank you. Like, here's a cookie. Like, no, I'm not going to thank you. Like, that's what you should be doing either as my friend or either as an ally. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to take these handouts. Like, I'm here for you. Like, I'm sorry you're going through this. Okay, what is what are your words going to do for me? Nothing. Go sign petition. Go donate. Yeah. Go spread awareness. Go educate yourself and educate others rather than, like, spewing all this. What am I going to do with your words? What am I going to do with I'm sorry? I'm going to read it, and I'm going to be like, okay, end. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to change anything. This stuff is still yeah. going on out there. I know. Yeah. I really feel sorry. Go help out my community and my people. Yeah. Yeah, the same ones with black partners, black friends, black Mm. co-workers, especially Mm. the the lot of you with black partners and y'all don't want to say anything. Mm. Oh, they might cancel me or oh, I'm like, I don't care. You literally have an, you have a whole black partner or a whole black friend and you don't want to stick up for them? Are you kidding me? Sticking up for you, like, and then people want to praise them, like, for being a decent human being, like we're all called to do. That's mm-hmm. what really bothers my mind, too. To this point, I feel like they only like the Black culture. They don't mm-hmm. really, you know, understand what it, like, is to be a Black person. You know, everyone's talking about, um, yeah, I love Black people. Your music is amazing. You're so cool. You're so energetic. And then when the time comes to help us, where are you? You're quiet. Yeah, exactly. Nowhere to be found. Like, a lot of these people mm-hmm. are posting on my snap like it's a regular day. I don't see any of you. Mm-hmm. Post, you know, Black Lives Matter and all this stuff. But yet you guys are quick to praise us when it's time to party. I know that there can be some fake people. Sometimes seeing these protests, we can think about also the looters or these uh, anarchists. These people just trying to create more chaos. So mm-hmm. how do we also feel about those? Um, I think that you can't, obviously, you can't solve every problem at once. Of course not, of course not. So there's no point in, like, like, if you're trying to, like, protest and bring awareness to, like, um, I guess, Black people being killed, mm-hmm. focus on that. Because, like, there's always going to be naysayers. There's always going to be um, racist people in the back and stuff. Deal with them when it gets to the time of doing that, you know? Mm-hmm. But just don't let it affect you. Yeah. Don't try, don't take on everything at once. Like, don't go on Twitter and then start, like, arguing with this person while you're still trying to be, like, be peaceful, da da da, da. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Just deal with everything mm-hmm. at a different time. Mm-hmm. So my last one is, if you guys think this is a revolution, if things will actually change. Be honest? No. <laughs> Uh, be like, honest. I would just be so plain and honest with you. Yeah. It may die down for a little while because remember, this is not the first time things like this is happening. Mm-hmm. Remember, it happened the first time, it died down. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we reach a tipping point, we protest, and then things die down and things go back to normal. Yeah. We reach a tipping point. George Floyd was the tipping point. We protest. We, we go out there like we're doing right now, Black Lives Matter, all mm-hmm. that stuff. It's going to die down again. So God knows in about 
five to ten years. Yeah. So we're gonna reach a breaking point, protest, and things will die down again. Honestly, I just feel like this is just a cycle going on. Like for the rest of our lives, there's always gonna be racism, but they're always we're always gonna try our best to make things change. I would like to think that this like things can change from this. I mm-hmm. definitely don't think America's gonna be the same. Oh, because for sure. No, no, no. Never have I seen like I mean, maybe in the past, but like since I've been alive, I've never seen like the entire country of America, all fifty states, protesting mm-hmm. like, for the same thing. And like with the riots going on, like the riots, like the looting and shit, part of like black people. Yeah. But like still, like there's so much damage being done for like good because it's needed with all the riots and stuff. Like I don't think people are just gonna let this one slide. Because I think it's been going on for too long that people are just like fed up with it. And they're exactly. like, enough is enough, mm-hmm. you know? Do you guys think this would be in the history books? Like a lot of people are saying like, our kids sure. are gonna come home Oh, for day. sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Most definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd like to think it'd be in the history books, but I don't think it'd be taught in history class because I can't oh, mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. remember a time where black, like something about black culture was taught except for slavery. No, because, like, even the riots in L.A., like, when that happened back in, like, the 90s, 80s, like, Mm -hmm. I literally would never have known about that unless, like, I learned from, like, a show I watched. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that happened. And, like, I always hated history when I was a kid. And I realized as I grew up, it's because they always talked about white history, not Canadian history. It was just Mm -hmm. what white people did, like, peacefully and how they won wars and how they did this, but they never talked about what they actually did. They came mm-hmm. here, they stole land, they created genocide of an entire culture and tried to get rid of them. They took black people from Africa, brought them over and enslaved them. But we don't learn about any of that. I don't think we're gonna learn about this in the future, but we definitely have to educate our children because that's yeah. that. Exactly. I feel like we just got to keep on being consistent with this. As you guys say, like, usually this dies down. We just got to keep it up. We got to keep the flame going and get people to understand that we are serious. Yeah, I don't know if, um, like, I, I, I want to think that change is going to happen after this. But I'm not, like, I can't positively be like, yeah, I, like, I really think it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But I also don't think that they're going to stop, like, anytime soon. Like, the rioting, the protests and stuff. Yeah. I mean, like, that's just what you have to do. I'm even taking the little changes that are happening right now. Like, first, um, when the whole situation went down, the fact that the four officers were fired that same day, like, I haven't seen that happen in so long, where they're fired within the, like, 24 hours. Like, that was insane. Mm -hmm. Like, that head officer was already on it. So I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, like, I took that, you know, but I knew that there has to be more. And even today, they announced they upped the degree. Now it's second degree murder. That's so great. I'm taking yeah. that too. So yeah, so the little changes that are happening right now, I'm taking it. But I know that there needs to be more. So I'm just kind of going with that, mm-hmm. giving myself a little bit of hope. But I know it's hard to have hope in times like this. Honestly, it's the same. Like I'm just holding on to the little victories and. Me, as someone who's practicing Christianity, like, people will say all the time, like, when things like this happen, you know, pray about it. But I'm like, the Bible also says faith without works is dead. So me praying, me just praying is me, like, doing absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Not saying this doesn't work, but you got to back up your prayer with some actions. Like, you can't just be praying and not signing petitions, not donating, not, like, helping out the cause, like, The whole purpose is we're supposed to be out there, the community, defending people. Honestly, I think it comes with knowing what you can do as an individual, taking this time to search yourself, knowing what you can do to help promote change, even if you can't physically do anything and be out there. Once you have, like, educated yourself, done self-reflection, done all you can do for yourself, then take that time to educate other people. Because knowledge is something that's shared, that's shared, you know? I like to think of it like this. Ignorance is darkness and knowledge gives light. So the more darkness there is, is the more people who don't know. So if you as a person have light and you're not spreading it to other people, then you're allowing the world that's suffering to stay in the dark. And we're not supposed to do that. So I just hope that this form of light 
even though it's kind of violent, it just, it needs to be done. It needs to be said. Yeah. Like sometimes you've been peaceful for too long. Sometimes you need a riot for people to listen. Exactly. <laughs> that is what I'm saying. It's like all of these people saying like, oh, you know, like I don't agree with rioting, but I'm here for peaceful protesting. Like it doesn't get you anywhere. So like yeah. people are like do, trying something else. Like, like Martin Luther <laughs> King, he, he protested very peacefully and they assassinated him anyway. Like yesterday I learned that um, like police forces were created. They were, call, they were called um, slave patrol. It was literally created to protect mm-hmm. Um, white people from black people because they they thought uh, black people want revenge and like you know revolting and stuff like that and that's literally what it still is today like, basically all, they just changed the name change it to you know police officers or whatever. wow i it never was, knew different states had it for different reasons it was like mainly for like just people of color in general because remember mm-hmm. white people oppressed not only black people but it was like everyone like indians everyone all of that yeah so they it, like they started making it just for people of color and like the states that had like black slaves obviously they like did it for black slaves mm-hmm. some people just did it for like um indians like stuff like that we were just tired like yeah. i was born tired to be honest i was born tired you know we've had enough we want our reparations Y'all keep saying, oh, what more do you guys want? You're already free. We're really not. Because you can look at me and just shoot me down with no explanation. Mm-hmm. You can look at me and tell me I'm resisting a re- arrest and then kneel on my neck and like just off me. You're specifically targeting and lynching my people. So no, I'm not free. Because if I have to be afraid for my life every time I leave my household, that's an issue. Police officers are supposed to be keeping everyone safe right like no matter your skin color you know you're supposed to be protecting the community so how do you expect me to feel safe in my community if when i see you or when you're near me i don't know if my life is going to end in the next five seconds the funny thing is when you become a cop you're supposed to undergo a psych evaluation and if you don't pass your psych evaluation you are not fit to serve Mm -hmm. so is it that people are hiding these people's psych evaluations when these things hit the fan show me the psych evaluation if you're so confident he passed oh he lynched the black man oh they're rioting they're protesting okay show me the psych evaluation then show me and prove to me that he was fit to serve and what he did wasn't racially motivated show me and i bet you can't exactly yes girl go off (laughs) just think like majority of people of color or like the people of color that are racist definitely get it from white people because everyone wants to be on the side of the white person because they're the one that's superior or they're the ones that actually have rights and Mm -hmm. privilege so when it comes down to black people and people of color people of color always ignore black people's problems or they're like okay yeah that's sad but what about my problems like you never see black people do that when it's a person of color's problem. So I don't understand why it's not reciprocated. And it's just like, they always want to be on the white man's side. And it's- yeah. Well, like, aside from all that, like, what I don't get, I just feel like black people, like, we created so much. If you, like, do research and find that, like, we created, like, so many genres of music and all that. And oh, then yeah. like, we're still at the bottom. We're still at the bottom of everyone. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. The inventions. Yeah. People listen to black. Exactly. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone wants to just benefit from the black culture, but don't even give us a thank you. Yeah. It's disrespectful. Straight up disrespectful. That's why we just gotta be unapologetically black every day. Mm. Yeah. Like, support black businesses if you can. If you can't even like, if you don't have to buy them stuff, like promote them. Mm-hmm. Like. The businesses by promoting them you're supporting them you know just yeah. be unapologetically black in everything you do because guess what you're gonna see my color and you gonna hear me i don't care how you feel yes i'm black yes yes miss me yes i'm black <laughs> that's that doctor that served you yes she's black and she's okay. black thank you uh-huh. come again come at me if you want to but i'm gonna be proud in this complexion you hear me exactly any last words, y'all? Yes, it's beautiful. That's all I can say. 
Hey, thanks for watching this video. Even if it was a few clips, I appreciate it. I understand it's pretty long. I just wanted to show how healthy it is for us black young people to be able to talk about these issues and have a conversation on top of them. So all their instas will be my bio and hopefully I'll see you next time. So take care, stay safe. Hi, Marlon. Do you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah. Aww. <laughs> oh, nothing. It's just that you're the only one that random black people time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the whole hour late, too. <laughs> no black people time. Ooh.